Well, it's a chilly mid-December day, and I came out for a little scouting hike. Not a big day, just three or four hours out in the woods. But I did make myself some lunch, and of course I'm going to have to make myself some coffee. So I brought something out that I've been testing for a while now, and I thought it's a perfect opportunity to share it with you. This is the Kappa Mocha from the company Wakeko. If you're interested in hearing more about this, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Wakeko for sending out the Kappa Mocha so that I could share it with you. I love making coffee in the woods, and I have a whole series of videos on making coffee in the woods. And there are any number of ways of making coffee out in the woods, and this is one that I wanted to add to my collection and try it out, and it's working out really well. Uh, very simple device, it's a pour over device, but everything is contained within it, so it's very compact, very easy to use, as you'll see. And uh, really, there's not much to say about it, but I will focus in a little bit on it, just so I can give you some specifications for it. The simple operation, I'll demonstrate, and I'll make myself a cup of coffee. But what I may do is just put the specifications in the video description if you're interested in all of that. Is of course, the links where you can take another look at it. Because I said, it's just a very simple pour-over design. But it is clever, well-made, and extremely effective. So basically, what you get is to start with, you get a double wall stainless steel mug that does keep your coffee warm for a long, long time. You get this sippy lid which does screw on and it has a silicone closure on it. It works good. I mean, if you shake it hard enough, you could probably get some to spill out, but for the most part, I haven't had that issue. I have used this in my vehicle, at home, and out here in the woods, as you can see. But when you take the lid off, then I'll show you the other devices that come with. So this is the pour over, and as you saw a minute ago, it sits in like this. It sits into the device, and when you're ready to use it, you just give it a quarter turn, and it brings it up out of the device. Now you're ready to go on to the next step. Now, there are a few other components. Let me just put that down. Um, I'm sharing these, and I brought them out in a small plastic bag for a reason. They're not items that I'm going to carry with me out in the woods on a regular basis. The filters I will, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Only because uh, they're kind of redundant for what I need. And what I'll show you is there's a coffee scoop, and it's a, quite a bit of a long handle coffee scoop, which is great, and it does fit down inside with the inside of the mug. Everything does compact down inside. The other device is this. This is just a little thing that you would set on the counter so that when you're finished and you're removing the pour over device, you can put it on top of this to catch any leaks so it doesn't make a mess of the counter. Then you put your sippy lid on, or you don't even have to put the sippy lid on, I guess, and just drink from it. So these two devices are probably going to stay home in the future. Again, that's the reason why I put it in a little bag just so that I could show them to you. There is a manual. What a manual. Let me show you this manual. This is incredible. I'm dropping things here. Look at this. I can't tell you how much information is in this. A lot of it, of course, is not the operation of this device, but recipes that you can use this device to make. Anything from just straight up black coffee to, uh, uh, well, it wouldn't be a latte mocha, but you know, there's, there's any number of different things. And it's all pictorially done. It's quite nice. It's in a few different languages. The warranty information, by the way, it does have a two year warranty. It's made of stainless steel and Triton. Triton is a BPA free plastic like material. So it's very safe to use that way. And the other thing it came with is 10 of these filters. And uh, these are just your typical cone-shaped filters. The only issue with it, uh, it's not an issue, it's just something to be aware of, is there a number one size. And the number one size is, the, well, obviously the smallest you can get. I find them a little hard to find in the grocery stores, but I, you know, there are a few grocery stores, another place you can buy these number ones. And the only reason I'm pointing this out is because I have a whole box of number twos at home that all my other pour over devices use like this. And I'm just going to put the number ones away. I'll bring it out in a second. So, well, actually I do need to bring one out just to show you the size difference. Can you see how much bigger a number two is than a number one? So if you run out of these number ones and you can't find any, you can use the number two, but you have to make a cone out of it. And the easy way to make a cone out of it is just fold it in on the sides until you get something like that. You can see where the two folds are there. And then you'll put it inside and it's, it's a little taller than a number one, but it's pretty much exactly the same size. I mean, a little bit of folding, you'll get it right, but that's all you have to do to convert a number two into a number one, just in case you can't find any number one filters at the grocery store. All right, setup is like this. That quarter turn rotate, take your filter. Works better when your hands aren't 
cold, but still doable. Put your filter down inside of the pour over cone, put your coffee in, pour the water in. That simple, right? And then when you're ready to drink, you just finish taking the top off and put your sippy lid on or drink directly from it and you're good to go. So I need to heat up some water and when I do, I'll just show you how the coffee's made and we'll talk about it and close the video out. And the water has just come to a boil. Time to put the coffee and move it away from the stove a little bit. Put the coffee in, Rampage coffee, of course. And this is the reason why I'm not gonna be using that scoop that is included is because I have this little tiny scoop in with my Rampage coffee that takes up a lot less space. And, and I'm gonna be carrying it anyway. Yeah, maybe two and a half scoops. Actually, my water is hard to boil there. And I'm gonna need a leather glove for this. Okay, quick question for those eagle-eyed viewers out there. What stove am I testing? Put it in the comments below. I'll let you know if you're right. All right, back to the pour over. Coffee's in the filter. Filter's in the pour over. And now I just start pouring in a little bit at a time. However, I do note that I did not raise it up that quarter turn like I'm supposed to. There we go. That's better. That's the way it's supposed to be working. I still had it in storage mode. So the only thing I'm going to say at this point about the pour over is because the filters are small and the pour over device itself is kind of small, uh, you don't get to put all your water in. It takes a bit of time for the water to go through. You're going to have to do a number of refills of water, depending on how much you want to make, of course. Going through quite quickly. Okay, what I'll do is just cut away for a moment, and when it's finally poured through, I just want to show you taking off the device off of the top of the uh, cup itself. Bring it back in a moment. Now my water has finished going through the coffee in the pour over, and I'm ready to take the top off so I can put the sippy lid back on. But this is just something I, I, I wanted to comment on, only because um, it came up in one of my other videos. Somebody made a comment on it where I was using my Rampage coffee. And they asked the, what I thought originally was a strange question. Now, in hindsight, I think they were being legitimate about the question, but it just kind of struck me as funny for the moment, only because, well, uh, I'll tell you what the question was. They wanted to know if this coffee was grown in Saskatoon. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Well, Canadians know we don't have a climate anywhere in Canada that will grow coffee. Saskatoon, probably the least of which. Well, not the least, but it's uh, plenty too cold, especially this time of year, for growing coffee. However, uh, Dustin and Lauren, the owners of Rampage Coffee, they do go to the farms directly where the coffee is grown, buy it directly from the farmer, have it shipped back in the green bean form, and then roast it in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, before shipping it out to their subscribers. So I just wanted to point that out. I know that most people realize that, but no, to, to the person who mentioned it, Canada's way too gro cold to grow coffee. Okay, just take this off. So here is the whole trick. You just finish turning it off, unscrewing it like this. If I was at home on the counter, I had that little disc I could put on the counter to keep it from getting wet, put my sippy lid on, blow the dirt off, and I'm good to go. And that will stay hot for a long, long time. But uh, before I get to drink it, I think uh, we'll just close this video up with a few more comments. All right. Ooh, that's still hot. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to drink this. So let's give it a try. <laughs> it is hot. Uh, tastes good, but it's hot. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to wait a few minutes for this to cool down to drink, obviously, but uh, I don't mind waiting. It's like I said, it's mid-December. You can see the late afternoon sun in my eyes up there, but this is just one of those nice times of year to get out. We haven't dropped to the really cold temperatures left, and you can tell by looking around, there's no snow on the ground. It's just before Christmas, the woods are quiet, windy, well, out that way, but that's sort of the north. But right where I'm at, I'm sheltered, and I'm just enjoying that beautiful late afternoon sun. And along with that, we'll go my coffee. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you. Once again, this is the cup of mocha from Wakeko. 
I have uh, another device from Kapamoka or from Wakeko that I've reviewed. I think I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. And I have a yet another one at home that I've been testing that I'll bring to you at a later time. They make some really clever travel or, or directed devices. Devices, uh, yeah, you can use them at home, obviously, but they're also made for traveling and they are suited well to using in the wood. Now, I know someone's going to say that's a bit too heavy for something that you want to use for coffee in the woods. And I mostly agree with you, except for this time of year. Uh, this time of year, you make a cup of coffee in a titanium mug and it's not going to be long before you're drinking cold coffee. So having a double wall stainless steel mug like this is great during the winter for sure. Okay, as I mentioned, I'll put all the specs or specifications uh, for this device and all, all the components together for the weight and everything in the video description as well as the links where you can take another look at. If there's one thing I'm hoping what Keiko is listening to, listening to this video for is this did not come with a stuff sack, which kind of surprised me because the other devices they sent me did. Whether or not mine didn't make it into the package or not, I had a, a stuff sack at home that fit the size of this and was nice. I could actually put that little canister of coffee on top all in the same size sack. But uh, yeah, if there was one con, I'd say, well, Keiko, please put a stuff sack in this so I can keep everything organized when I go into the woods or traveling for that matter. All right, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.